just like a zipper. Well, I'll just push it out then. No, I'm gonna get my daddy's tractor. And then he loped off through the mud. That Ned Smoke was a mighty nice boy. I'd rather be killed on 319. <laughs> well, Ned came back with his daddy's tractor, slinging mud in all directions. We hooked the chain up to the bumper, and Mama steered when Ned pulled the truck to the higher ground. Then we all four squeezed into the cabin of Ned's truck, and he took us to the wind. Louise wiped the mud off her feet, put her shoes on, and sucked herself up right. Mama hiked up her pantyhose one more time, and I checked my lips and then you weird. <laughs> we were only a little bit late. Uh, before you go in, you got some all over your mouth. <laughs> Ned rummaged under his seat and pulled out a filthy flannel rag. Here's something to wipe it off with. So much for Pana Bob. <laughs> So much for the lips of a stranger. But after all, I wondered, sitting in the pew between Mom and my sister, both elegantly serene in their clean basket and hose and zipper knit dress, <laughs> how would that magazine stranger with her high heeled shoes and her shimmering lips fare on Butternade Road the day after a heavy rain? <laughs> Flipping through a catalog. You wish you could order the bodies, not the clothes. This poem, written by Maggie Martin, expresses the thoughts of many teenagers in our society today. In this free verse poem, a young woman describes how the mirrors around us can reflect what we think and not what we truly see. Mirrors by Charlotte Cooper. I often hear, mostly from psychologists on talk shows, how teenagers see distorted images in our full-length mirrors. The mirrors that are decorated with prom pictures, snapshots, and cute boys. Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, David Duchovny. In my room, Ben, Matt, and David are next to my bed. They are on the wall across from the mirror. On my desk, on my ceiling, but not around my mirror. Around my mirror are women. Kate Moss, Heather Locklear, Calissa Flockhart. I get to see them as I look at myself. And I am disgusted. After seeing what I should look like around the mirror, I hate my body and self. I truly believe that I should look that way. Because no matter what I say in class about images, I truly believe that it is my own fault that I don't look like a model. I feel I don't deserve anything when I look in the mirror. And the reflective image shocks me, because in my mind, I have a very different self-image. I'm not skinny skinny in it, but trim and fit. Then I catch sight of myself and I think, I can't imagine what everyone else must think of me. And of course, it is always about what everyone else thinks. I know I'm going to slap my mother one of these days for telling me to eat less and giving me the look. I know she's ashamed that I'm not as thin as she was in high school. I can't wear her finished cardigans. I can't even fit into her wedding dress. She says it's about health. Maybe it is. But when her eyes are sorrowful as I walk into the kitchen, maybe I'm not even eating. And the corner of her lips curl inward in implication. I'd scream at her, leave me alone! And she just looks at me like she always does. And that look just makes me want to stuff myself. If my own mother can't accept me with my body, who am I to love myself? After all, mothers know best. I'm letting her down. I know if I were my mother, I'd be ashamed of me too. Ashamed to take me shopping, asking the sales lady, can we order this in a bigger size? I can't torture myself physically. I'm not dedicated enough to be bulimic, anorexic, exercising all day, starving myself. I read all the stories, and I know while saying out loud, how could anyone do this to herself? And I still wish I could be like them. I'd like me too much to mutilate, but not enough to accept. I am jealous of anorexic women, and I know 
I know that anorexia and bulimia are diseases. I know they are destructive. I know they are deadly. But I want to join. Where do I sign up? To risky my mind? My sanity? The body I hate to inhabit? Is the price for thinness that I am willing to pay? <laughs> but even as I'm willing to pay, I can't. I lack commitment. So long go the long, silent talks with the mirror image. The image that I dread to look at, but from which I can't seem to tear away my gaze. Purple lines mark my body. Battle scars? No scars of cowardice! I wouldn't have these brandies if I only had some control. I scold myself. And I stare. As if looking at them will make them go away. As a woman who loves herself in the mind, I know I deserve everything. And I should get it. But as a girl who hates herself in the body, I know I deserve nothing. And I should get it. It frauds. I can feel my blood hurtling, but I just can't stop looking at myself. And I can't stop hating myself. Sometimes I just want to tear down the mirror. Tear it down and scream, no more! No more! But other times, I just stare at myself in the mirror. And sometimes, I just cry. Tonight's performance of the complete history of America. Tonight, we're going to explore the history of a great nation. But before we do, I'm sure many of you are wondering, why? Well, then, we're going to explore the history of America. Well, I'm sorry to inform you that there's probably about as many answers to your questions as members of the past. So, let's just get started. Thanks, Josh. In the tradition of my white, Anglo-Saxon, Puritan, imperialist, westward expansionist, capitalist, intellectual forebears, I will be free. Thank God, I'm out of fingers. Yeah. I believe it was Benjamin Franklin who said, History is written by the winners. Well, tonight, it's our turn. The Complete History of America, abridged by Adam Long, Marie Martin, and Austin Tashi. Reverend Farrell, you and your followers are going to kill 100 witches this week. You're going 
where to call your own. Oh, I suppose you're right, Madison. Come on, man, we have to think 